Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the Productivity PLC Simulator Chain Conveyor MS. Now the Machine Simulator MS is part of the Easy PLC software suite. It has many built-in machines that can be programmed. The Chain Conveyor is one of these machines. It will transfer large and small boxes on the line to different locations. The Productivity series of PLCs will be used to program this virtual machine. In using the Productivity Suite software, we will connect the simulator to the Chain Conveyor Transfer Machine. This will be done using Modbus TCP Ethernet for communications. Using the five steps for program development, we will show this uh, how this is actually programmed. So let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video one. There will be links to the rest of the videos in this series as well. So the first step in programming this is to define the task. So if we look at the machine simulator, it has a demo mode for the built-in machines. So we hit start and this is the chain conveyor. And you will see that um, there's a written version over here of what actually happens. So two boxes of goods will arrive on the cargo line, some with high boxes and others with small boxes. Goods with high boxes should be sent to the transporter on the right, small boxes to the left. And using the reading station with two photo, uh, uh, photo cells, you can make the selection. And the chain conveyor to the move the pallets to the appropriate conveyor. So that's basically what you do. And in here we have a demo mode that will actually show us how this actually operates. So this will load this demo mode up and we can see the machine actually running. Sometimes it just takes a minute. There we go. So we're on demo mode and you see boxes coming in. And based on the size of that, that's a large one that will actually move to the right or to the left. And what we can do is we can speed up this time lapse and we can see how this is actually operating. And the small boxes to the right there. Or on this time lapse, we can actually slow it down. And you can see how um, slow we can go or fast we can go. We can also uh, fly around and actually see all the different controls of this uh, machine. There's the control box with the start, stop, and e stop button. Now the next step in developing this code is to actually look and define the inputs and outputs. So we will just exit this demo mode, go back to the main screen. And we will go to the start screen of our chain conveyor now. And with the start screen located, you can see here, we can view the I.O. or inputs and outputs. So on here, if we want the work center creation part, we can hit this button and you can see that it goes on and off. Our distribution, this is this conveyor. We have our chain advance, which is right here. So it moves from here to here. We have our chain rise. You can see this is rising up. And then we have a sensor here that tells us it has risen. Chain right, right, moves it to the right. Chain left, moves it to the left on this chain conveyor here. Belt reverse, operates both of these uh, belts at the same time, removing the uh, pallet after the selection is done. Then we have our stop, stop. We have our pre-stop, which is right here. So that spaces the boxes out because we don't know exactly when they're coming in. 
Then we have our stop button light and our start button light, which we can just move around in our 3D environment here. And we'll just spin around. And you can see here is my start and stop lights. There's my stop, there's my stop, my start. And then you can see on my input side, there's my emergency stop. So I can ring out all those different IOs. Now, once I have that uh, um, filled, the next step is to uh, develop a logical sequence of operation, which is step three. And usually a flowchart or sequence table is used to fully understand the process that needs to be controlled. It must answer like following questions like what happens when electric power or pneumatic air is lost? What happens when an input or output device fails? Do you need redundancy? Things like that. This step is where you spend a lot of your work understanding everything about the program and operation. And it will prevent you from continuously rewriting the PLC uh, logic code. Know all of the answers up front is vital in the development of the PLC program. Now, our chain um, conveyor or uh, transfer can be seen as three different operations. So let's just uh, view, let's just zoom up here. And then we'll you just zoom down and look at the conveyor. And what you'll notice is that we have three different ones. We have the creation of the box that so come into here and our, on our distribution table. Then we have our distribution table to our chain conveyor right here. And then finally we have our, um, whether it's going right or left here. So there's three different sections or parts of that uh, operation. Now, what we can do is now, once we have the fully understand what we have to do and have a logical sequence of operations. Now we can develop our PLC program. And um, this writing of the program is the next step. So you notice that we have three steps before we even get to the part where we're actually writing um, information. So let's call up our productivity suite software. And what you'll see is that we have here is our uh, software. We have our tag database, which we will use to uh, put in our inputs and outputs here. And so we have our part creation. We have our conveyor dis distribute advance. We have our chain advance rise. So basically everything that you saw already on our chain conveyor we have duplicated here in our tag database. And what we've got, um, we've created um, these inputs and outputs. And our discrete inputs is Modbus 1000 or 1 or 100,001 is the actual address for the start of our discrete inputs. Now the productivity um, in our case, will be set as a Modbus server to the machine simulator client. Now, Modbus input addresses must be set for as outputs in a logic. To accomplish this uh, using uh, 3.12, you must do this the following. So we assign the output tags as Boolean, and we don't assign any Modbus addresses yet. Then we create our ladder, ladder logic, and once all the outputs are assigned in the ladder code, change the type in the data um, database to discrete input, then assign your Modbus address. Then we can look at the actual program itself. And we will make room here by looking at our desktop. And let's just turn on our comments. So the start stop for the circuit. So basically there's my uh, stop output button or button light and my start uh, button light so the start the stop button light will be on when the machine is running so that we know what button to hit when we need to turn it off and our start will indicate this is the button you hit when you want to start it now if both of them are off when the e-stop e is hit 
So emergency stop is hit. We have to hit the uh, reset on the button first. Then we do our pallet create. So as long as we have our stop button here, then we do our create pallet comes in. So then we have our pre-stop, then our conveyor advance, then our stopper before the chain conveyor. We have our chain conveyor operation. And you can see here, once we go to the chain conveyor, it will actually determine based on the uh, photocell box signal, whether it's on or off, whether we're going to go right or left. Then we have our chain conveyor rise. Then we, um, based on our pallet right or left, we will actually choose if we're going to go right or left with our chain conveyor. Then we start a timer and we set this for five seconds. And once the five seconds indicates after it goes from the chain conveyor to the removal or exit conveyor, either right or left, then it times out and then we can start the procedure all over again. We also have, as long as we have a start button, we have our conveyor uh, exit conveyors going on and off all the time. And in this particular case here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually have it on a Proctivity 2000 PLC, which actually has a, a four lines of, of LED display for us to show. And we're just going to put up uh, ACC Auto Easy uh, PLC Chain Conveyor on that display. So that is our program. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a simulator. So we'll just hit simulator on here. And then we just warns us that we need to transfer this package over. So we're going to transfer this package over and then we can monitor the inputs and outputs. So, and then the very last step after we've developed this code is to actually test the code. So again, like we said, we're going to be using the Modbus TCP on our uh, productivity um, PLC to communicate to the machine simulator. We have the machine, the, you have the package already now programmed and we have to now look at um, the IP address where this machine is actually running. And this is actually the computer uh, running the simulation along with our machine. So if we call up a, a command prompt and we're just going to type in IP config slash all, what we will notice is that in here, we have our IP address of this computer, which is 192.168.125. So we have to remember that uh, number in order to uh, know what address our Modbus TCP is coming in at. So that is our program. So we're all set now. We'll go back to the um, simulator. There we go. And on the simulator, currently right now, we have no PLC uh, connected. So let's go into the IO drivers. We will select Modbus driver and we'll hit configure. Now under configure on our TCP IP, we have to enter 25 as our IP for the computer itself. Our digital inputs is zero and our digital input number is 11 that we're gonna be using for this project. Then we have our output Digital outputs, the starting best again is zero, and digital output number is nine. And remember, this is offset by one in the Proactivity uh, Suite software, and the Modbus address is for it. So hit OK, and now we have our uh, inputs and outputs here. Now we can manually move each one of our driver outputs to the PLC inputs or the driver inputs to the PLC outputs in order to assign each one, or what we can do is just hit driver and automatic assignment. And you can see that they've placed them in here. Then we can hit exit and start driver and exit. What you'll notice is that we have our driver connected now and we can view our IO. There we go. And what we can do is just move down here. Go and back up a little bit. 
So flying around the environment will take a little bit of getting used to. But you can see it's very functional. There we go. That's probably a good view right there. And what we can do is call back our um, PLC. And what we must do is actually right now it's in stop mode. We'll put it into run mode. Yes, we are sure. There we go. So now we are actually running our PLC program. And if we want to, we can call up our digital IO. So if we look at our apps and go to the data view, here is our digital IO. And this is what our PLC looks like. We can actually look at how that is actually performing a lot as well with our ladder and how our ladder is actually performing. Let's just move this down. And there we go. So you can see here as right now, I have none of my inputs here except for my start light, it's on. That's what my program's doing. And I can actually hit my stop. There you go, my stop's hit, both lights go off. If I look back at here, you can see that my emergency button now has uh, been selected. You can make sure that stays up there. And you can see that if I hit my, undo my stop, then you can see that my uh, light comes back on again. Now what I can do is actually run through this program and make sure everything is functioning as it should. Let's hit the start button. And now you can see my conveyor coming. My stop is up. And there comes our first pallet. It comes in. Here goes my second pallet. It's loading onto our chain conveyor. And it's taking it left or right. So in this case here, my small box is going to the left, my large boxes will be going to the right. And we can stop this anytime. And then if we hit start again, go. So we, we come up with a number of different ways and in operations, start, stop, we can hit the E stop to figure out what's going on. And within this environment, we can actually um, fly around and actually see, there's my two sensors, determine what box size. And we can actually watch this operation um, and our program logic as, as it's being performed. So here's my digital IO. I can watch it. We can watch actually the simulation itself. You could watch the actual um, ladder logic. And you can see how each of the areas actually are functioning. This all helps us, aiding us in developing our PLC program and creating uh, ladder logic. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems, robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.